everyone. I am Lakeisha Holloway. And I'm Nate Holloway. And we have some questions here that we um, received from a recent event that we did. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start um, this session with the question, what are some ways to keep Christ as your center in a relationship with someone you're attracted to? Now, if you live in this world and you are a single person, you're going to eventually be attracted to someone. It's a yes. natural part of, you know, our walk. I'm attracted to her. <laughs> You're too silly. But even in this walk, how do you um, relate to the opposite sex in your relationships? How do you keep Christ at the center? And um, one of the things Nate always, he talks about is when we first started dating, or really on our first date, the one thing I wanted to know from him was what was his vision for my life? Yes. Be because before we met, um, the Lord had dealt with me and my own singleness and some of the bad choices that I made as being a Christian single. Um, and he wanted me to... First of all, find, seek my purpose. And in seeking my purpose, I had to seek him because he embodied my purpose. So the more I seek God, the more he started showing me when I would date someone, um, Yes, they may be a great speaker. Yes, they may have a good education. Yes, they may have a good job, a nice car, a home, or whatnot. But these people also may not have known their own true purpose in Christ. They may not have realized their their purpose and their vision for their lives. So what the, what I when I started seeking the Lord for that for myself, even though I was attracted to someone, when I would meet them or if I would date them for a while, the Lord would quickly reveal something about their character or the nature of the person that wasn't even right, wasn't something that he was desiring of, or they may be a perfectly fine individual, but they were somebody else's. They were not mine. So I had to get to a point where I was so intimate with the Father that I noticed these things in other people, and I didn't go with my own personal feelings. Oh, I want to be married. Oh, I'm, I'm 30 now, and I have to settle down, and I had to listen to people who say, oh, girl, you're chasing your career. You're chasing um, a job or whatnot, or you're chasing your career. And you're going to wake up one day and you're going to be old and alone. And nope. <laughs> I just had to tell them, look, I'd rather be old and alone with Jesus than to be with someone that did not fit the purpose that God had for my life. So it all summed up for me learning who I was in Christ. And that was only by seeking the heart of the Father and what he had for me. So when I met Nate and I asked Nate, what, what's your vision for your life? His answer and the fact that he was so confident in who God created him to be resonated with me. And, and at that time, I knew he knew exactly where he was going. Lord, does your plan for my life fit into his purpose? Yep. Yeah. And actually it did. But because for me, when she asked me a question, it was a perfect timing because months before that, God had been dealing with me with that, with my vision, his call for my life, what he's called me to do, how to set a vision for my life. And I had put all that in yeah. place and started yeah. putting everything in place, started moving toward that. And then that's when she came along because God said to me that when I focus on my vision and his call of my life, then my wife would come. And so when I did that, aha, <laughs> she came along. Woo! It was shot. But <laughs> to answer that question for you, uh, there's several things you can do. Uh, to keep Christ as a center, one is you have to know your purpose. Right. You have to know your purpose. You have to know what God called you to, what's your purpose in life. And as she asked me, the person that you're with, that you're attracted to, ask them what's their purpose. And make sure their purpose right. lines up with yours. And make sure their purpose lines up with the will of God for your life. Because the looks are great. Yeah. Body build, brrr, you know, the six pack is great. You know, money is great. Uh, the car is great. Yeah. But none of that is great when it's not in God's will. Right. Because if you're out of line, then everything is going to be out of line with your marriage. I've seen that happen to so many women who marry a guy just for the money or because of what right. he has. And then they're miserable in their relationship. Yeah. Um, the next thing you can do is set boundaries. Yes. Accountability. Yes. You have to be accountable. Have an accountability partner, but set boundaries. Right. Let this person know, ladies, let him know. And men can say this too, hey, we're not having sex. We're not being intimate. Yes. We're not doing this. 
These are the boundaries in this relationship. I have a relationship with Christ. And be honest with me. Don't be afraid to tell somebody you have a relationship with Christ. Tell me I have a relationship with Christ. And this is where my standards are. And these are my boundaries. If you cannot handle that, cannot deal with that, you cannot stay behind this line, then we can't be together. We can't deal with you. No matter. I did that to him. Yes. I wouldn't let him kiss me. I, we stopped. We kissed before um, we got married. And it was about six or seven months or so. I said, you know what? The kiss, it feels something within me. Ha something happens within me that I don't like. Right. So, therefore, I don't think we should even kiss until we get married. Right. It took us to a place we shouldn't have been. Right. And, you know, and it could have destroyed our ministry exactly. and our marriage. So, when yes. she did that, I was in total agreement. It was hard. Trust me. <laughs> Um, she would, every time I went to kiss her, she'd do just like this, you know, and give me the cheek, you know, and she'd give me the cheek and, and, and for a little bit, it was, it was a little hard, but then I realized what we were doing and the, the people that we had to minister to, we had Absolutely. to minister to you guys. So, um, I was able to deal with that. So, and then when we got married and he said, you may kiss your bride, Woo! I grabbed his face. Yes. Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, one, know your purpose. Yes. Two, set boundaries. And the third thing we're going to give you is have an accountability person. Right. You know, we have couples, even now, we have couples that we are accountable to. Right. Then I had couples that I was accountable to and friends I was accountable to that held me to my standards. She had friends and couples that held her to right. her standard. When we got together, even dating we had couples that held us to that standard, right. and they even hold us to that standard now. So have an accountability partner. Have accountability couples that hold you to that standard that won't be afraid to tell you the truth. So to sum it up, know your purpose, right. set boundaries, and be accountable to someone. And if you do that, you will be able to keep Christ right. at the center of your relationship. One thing I want to add, too, at the end, he summed it all up, but I want you to start praying for that person. Mm -hmm. um, pray for that person. Pray that they will find their purpose, that they will find their vision. Pray for the strength. Ladies, if you're praying for that man, pray that he will know who he is in Christ and that he yes. can cover his family, cover you, cover your future children. If you're a single parent, he, his, your children become his children. His right. children become your children. So start praying for that. If some of you guys, you don't want anyone with children. It's okay. Um, just tell the Lord what you want. You know, I have friends that write a list. They have written a list of the, the features, the character traits, um, the height, the weight, you know, what they want that person to have. It's okay to do those things. It's okay to speak to that area. Um, it's okay to already start confessing favor yes. and blessings over their life. Um, the Lord is going to be faithful to you if you're faithful to him. And if you continue to pray mm -hmm. for that person who will eventually come into your life because they exist, you haven't met yet because the Lord is still preparing you for each other. Yes. So, uh, like I said, follow these principles and yeah. these purposes that we gave you. And you will be successful in keeping Christ in the center of your relationship. Yes. So, guys, we love you. We thank you for tuning in. Again, email us at krelationships at gmail.com. Check out our website at kingdomrelationships.net. Yep. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, K Instagram, YouTube. We are there for you. Join the movement. Join the community. This is Nate Holloway. And Keisha. We're signing out. We love you. God bless you. Peace.